Hi, today we're looking at Functional Skills Entry Level 3. This is the Pearson Edexcel exam board. It's uh, set 4 and we're going to start with the non-calculator section. Question 1. Talia works for a company that grows and sells plants. A customer buys 256 vegetable plants and 288 flower plants. Calculate the total number of plants. So what we want is we want 256. And we're going to add that to 288. So we've lined up our units, our tens and our hundreds. So we're going to start off with 6 plus 8. Or think of it as 8 plus 6. Start with the bigger number. So add on 6. And make it 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. So put the 4, carry the 1. Then we want 5 plus 8. Again, start with the bigger number and count on 5. We can have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Plus the 1 we carried, 14. And then 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So we've got a total of 544. Question 2. Talia grows plants in rows. There are 25 plants in each row. There are 15 rows of plants. How many plants does she grow in total? So if you think we've got the first row, we're going to have 25 plants going along there. The second row, we're going to have another 25 plants. The third row, the same, all the way down to 15. So if we want to know the total number of plants, it's going to be 15 lots of 25. Or think of that as 15 times 25. Yeah, well, it's not always straightforward multiplying two digit numbers by two digit numbers. So we can split this up. So we can think, well, I'm quite comfortable multiplying by 10. So let's think of it as 10 lots of 25. Well, if we've used 10 lots, then that leaves us with 5 lots of 25. So in total, 10 and 5, that's 15, 25, but we've just split it up into two calculations. Well, I know if I want 10 lots of something, 10 times 25, I just add a zero on the end. Now for the 5 times 25, I am going to work this out as a column. But it's nicer than it would have been because I've only got a single digit number at the bottom now. So 5 times 5, we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So 5, carry the 2. And 2 times 5 is 10. Plus the 2 makes it 12. So 10 times 25 is 250. 5 times 25, we've got it here is 125. So if we add these two together, it's going to tell us 15 times 25. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 2 plus 1 is 3. So our answer, I'll write it down again here, is 375 plants. Question 3. Talia needs to deliver 550 plants to a customer. She fills trays with plants. Each full tray holds 60 plants. How many trays of plants does Talia fill? Show how many plants are left over. So we want to know how many lots of 60 plants fit in the 550. So we can think of that that's 550 divided by 60. Now, what's nice here is because we've got a zero on both of the numbers, at the end of both of the numbers, we can cancel the zeros. So this is the same as 55 divided by 6, which we can calculate using the bus stop method. 
So put the bigger number inside the bus stop, smaller number on the outside. Okay, I mean, I've written it as a bus stop method, but I suppose really what we're using, we're actually using our times table knowledge, but, but we, we, we're going to see how, how it goes. So we're going to use our six times table to see how many times six goes into 55. Because six doesn't go into five. So we have to do six into 55. So we've got six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. And it's only one more, so it's going to be nine times remainder one. Right, so we know we can fit nine trays. Now, we had 60 plants uh, for each one. So this is... The remainder here isn't going to be the final remainder we have, and I'll show you why that's the case. So we know that we can fit nine trays into the 550. So what we can do is... We can say, well, if we've got six tra 60 plants on each tray and we've got nine of them, well, nine times zero is zero, and nine times six, or six times nine, you can do, uh, actually, the nine times tables, nice to write down, because we've got nine, then increase the ten, reduce the units by one. Increase the ten by one, reduce the units by one. So you can see this pattern, the tens gets bigger by one, the units reduces by one. So if we want to find out what six nines are, well, one, two, three, four, five, so it'll be the next number, so increase this by one, reduce this by one, so it's going to be 54. Okay, so we've got nine trays of 60 plants each, it's going to be 540. They've got 550 to deliver. So we want to work out the difference. So we're going to do 550 minus 540. Well, zero minus zero is zero. Five minus four is one. And five minus five is nothing. So we're going to have 10 plants left over. So when we're writing this down here, we've got nine full trays of plants, 10 plants left over. Now this isn't the only way to work out this question. Uh, so you can, if you've got an alternative way that works, then that's fine. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now and, and, and you can experiment and see if, if you prefer any other ways. Question four. Tanya has these boxes of plant food. We've got plant food 635 grams and a smaller one with 384 grams. Tanya says the boxes of plant food weigh more than one kilogram in total. Is Tanya correct? Well, we've got grams and we've got kilograms. We want to turn everything into the same units. Well, I know that one kilogram equals... 1,000 grams. Well, they're talking about the total of these two boxes, so let's add them together and see what we get. So, uh, we want 635 plus 384. Well, 5 plus 4 is 9. 3 plus 8, or 8 plus 3, is 11. Have the 1. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So that's going to be 1,019 grams in total. So Tally says the boxes of plant food weigh more than 1 kilogram. Is Tally correct? Yes, she is. Because 1,019 grams is bigger than 1,000 grams. Now on to the calculator section.
Natalia works for a company that grows and sells plants. She makes a list of plants in order of height, with the tallest first. Which plant does Natalia put second in the less in the list? So which is the second tallest plant? Now we've got six different ones on here. Right, okay, so we've got 205, 89, 352, 250, 95, and 325. So if we're looking for, we want the second tallest. Well, which is the tallest? Well, we've got 200s. 89. We've got two that are in the 300s. Well, these are going to be taller than the ones in the 200s and the ones that haven't got any 100s. So we can rule out all of these. We know it's going to be one of these two. We want the second tallest. Well, which is bigger? 352 or 325? Well, this is the biggest one. So the second biggest must be this one here. So we can tick that box. Question two. Tanya grows 300 tomato plants. She sells 136 tomato plants. Tally says she has 174 plants left over. Is Tanya correct? So why do you think this? Well, if she started with 300, and she sells, so we take away 136 plants. What are we left with? 300 minus 136. That gives us 164, which is not equal to 174. So is she correct? No, otherwise her number would be the same as our number. Question three. Tally grows 400 plants in total. She knows that 100 of these plants are chili plants. Tally says that one tenth of the plants are chili plants. Is Tally correct? Okay, well, let's work it out. What is one tenth of 400 plants? So one tenth of 400, well, that's the same as 400 divided by 10. 400 divided by 10 is 40. Well, she says it's a tenth. Well, that's 40, which is not the same as 100. So is Talia correct? No. So she's making a few mistakes here. Talia wants to grow plants. She measures the soil temperature. And we've got a thermometer there. And what we need to do is to have a look at where this is coming up to. So this is the temperature there. Okay, and we've got the measurements up the side. The soil temperature needs to be 17 degrees Celsius for the plants to grow. How much warmer does the soil need to be to the nearest degree Celsius for the plants to grow. So let's work out what it is at the moment. We've got lots of these. We've got some big lines and smaller lines. So I wonder what these could be. Could they be each degree? So if this is 10, could it be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19? No, because that this is only 15. That doesn't work. So it must be that each of these, let's try 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that looks right. So I'm actually going to write these in. So these smaller ones must be half a degree. Well, they're talking about knowing to the nearest degree Celsius and the nearest number is 13 there. So how much warmer does the soil need to be for the plants to grow? Well, it needs to be up at 17. So 15, 16... 17 would be up there. So to get to, from 13 to 17, we're doing 1, 2, 3, 4. So it needs to be 4 degrees Celsius warmer. Question 4. 
Question 5. Talia records the temperature in a greenhouse at different times. At 6 o'clock in the morning, it's 11 degrees. At 12 o'clock, so midday, it's 18 degrees. And 1800, or if we take 12 off of this, it would be 6 o'clock in the afternoon, it's 13 degrees. Talia needs a line graph to show the information. Complete the line graph using a correct scale. Right, so they've started to draw this for us. They've put the times in, which is nice. We've got to put the numbers up at the side. And, well, what's the biggest number we need? The biggest one is 18. So, what about if we literally just count from zero? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, let's bring this down, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's fine, we only need to go up to 18, so going up to 20 is fine. So now we can, now we know it fits, we can write those temperatures in. I don't need to write every temperature on every line, we can just do it in using our sort of divisions like that. So we need a line graph, so that means for each of the points we just draw a cross. So at 6 o'clock, we've got a temperature of 11 degrees. So 6 o'clock, we're going to go up 5, 10, so 11 degrees would be there. At 12 o'clock, it's 18 degrees. So 12 o'clock here, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then at 1800 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon, we've got a temperature of 13 degrees. So 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. And because it's a line graph, we need to connect our points using a ruler. And when we're drawing the line graph, we just start from left to right and connect them as we're going along. Question six. Talia wants to put a new heater in a greenhouse. The heater must be 10 meters or more from each side of the greenhouse. Draw an X on the diagram to show a suitable position for the heater on the floor. Okay, uh, so this is the diagram of the greenhouse floor and we're told down here that each of these boxes is two meters. Now we need to be 10 meters away from each side of the greenhouse. So how many boxes is that going to be? Well we can work that out by doing 10 divided by 2. That's going to tell us how many boxes. So 10 divided by 2, that's 5 boxes. So if it's got to be 5 away from the edge, well let's start thinking about this edge on the left here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can draw a line straight up to the top. And we can say, well it can't be anywhere in there. Because this would be within... 10 meters of one edge. We can do the same with the bottom. Let's count up 10 or, or five boxes. So one, two, three, four, five. So we can draw a horizontal line. So well, it can't be anywhere down here. Let's do it on the side. So one, two, three, four, five boxes. And it's going to apply all the way from that right side. So it can't be anywhere in here. And five boxes away from the top. So one, two, three, four, five. So it can't be anywhere there. So we can put it in any of these spaces here. And they've shown us we just need to put a cross. So I'm going to pick any of these boxes. I'll pick that one.
But if you pick this one, it would be fine. If you pick this one, it'd be fine. If you pick this one, it wouldn't, because it's in our sort of exclusion zone. Question seven. Talia turns the temperature dial on the greenhouse heater. What fraction does she turn the dial? So this would be one complete circle. You can see it's been split into one, two, three, four sections. And it's only been turned one section. So it's going to be one quarter. Question eight. Talia buys a time switch for a greenhouse heater. The time switch costs £44.34. The cost of delivery is £3.76. What is the total cost of the time switch and delivery? Use correct money format. So we've got £44.34. And we want to add an extra £3.76. which gives us 48.1. But this is money format, so we need to have a pound sign. And money, we always need to have two decimal places, unless it's a whole number of pounds, which it's not. So we can't have point 0.1. We're going to have to put a zero to make that 48 pounds and 10p. Question nine. Round £3.76 to the nearest 10p. So I'm going to draw a number line and say, well, what tens is it between? Well, it could be £3.10, £3.20, £3.30. Although this one, £3.76, the 10 below this would be £3.70. And the 10 above it, well, 10p more than £3.70, would be £3.80. So it's between these two numbers. What would halfway be? Well, half of 10 is five. So halfway would be £3.75. £3.76 is more than this, so it's going to be in this side. So the nearest 10p, well, it's not going to be this one down here, because it's to the left, but we're already to the right of halfway, so it's going to be £3.80. And then ask us to use the rounded cost to check your answer to question eight. Well, in question eight, we were adding 44.34 plus three pounds or 3.76. So now we can do 44.34 plus three pounds 80. When you're typing it in the calculator, you don't need to put the zero at the end. And it gives us 48 pounds and 14p, which is close to what we started. So we can say approximately equal to 48 pounds 10. So that's our check done. Question 10. Talia wants to use the greenhouse heater. She switches the heater on between 7.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Which clock shows the time Talia switches the heating on? Well, we've got some in the 24-hour clock here. So let's turn our times into the 24-hour clock. So because they're p.m., they're after midday, we need to add an extra 12 hours. So 7 plus 12... This is going to become 19.30 and 8 plus 12, this is going to become 20.30. Okay, so we want to find the clock which is between 19.30 and 20.30. Well, 17.40, 17 is before 19, so it's not this one here. 
Oh, eight. Well, that's in the morning. That's before 12, so it can't be that one. Uh, we've got 2010. Well, that's more than 1930 and less than 2030. So this one's looking good. But let's check the others just to make sure. 2050. Well, that's after 2030, so it's got that one. We've got another morning one. And 18. Well, that's before 1930. So... It's definitely this one here. Question 11. This chart shows the rainfall in summer 2019. And we've got the rainfall in millimetres on the left. And we've got May, June, July and August. And the bar is showing us how much rain there was. In June 2020, there was 40 millimetres of rainfall. How much more rainfall was there in June 2019 than in June 2020? So they've already told us in June 2020 it was 40 millimetres. So what was it in June 2019? Well, we've got June 2019 here. It's this bar. So we just want to read this one off so right, well this is between our lines so we've got to work out what this means well if this is 60 we want to know what each gap is worth because if it was just 61 62 63 64 65 we wouldn't get up to 70 so these must be worth something else so you could can just work it out by sort of process of elimination, almost just think, well, what could it go up in, maybe in twos or threes? Or we can say we've got one, two, three, four, five sections there, and it changes by 10. So if we think 10 divided by five, well, you probably know this one without a calculator, it's two. So each of these must be going up in twos, so 62. 64, 66, 68. We're actually in between 62 and 64. So this one here, I'll write it on top, must be 63. So if we want to know how much more rainfall there was in June 2019, well, we've said this was 63 millimetres. Well, then we take the bigger number, 63, and subtract the smaller number. 63 minus 40 gives us 23, and that's in millimetres. Question 12. Talia makes a mixture of liquid plant food and water. She puts liquid plant food in a jug. This must be our jug here. This is how much she's got in there by the looks of it. Talia pours water into the jug to make a total of one litre of mixture. How much water does she pour into the jug? Well, I know that one litre is 1,000 millilitres. So which is going to be this here. So that's my one litre. So what we're trying to work out is what's this gap. So we want to know what this is worth, how much is in there at the moment. So again, we kind of look at the, the gaps, these sections. So we've got one, two, three, four, five gaps there. And in total, it's 1,000. So if we do 1,000 divided by five, it'll tell us what each one of these is worth. Each one is 200 millilitres. So 200 millilitres. The next one up would be, add another 200, so it would be 400 millilitres. So if we want to know what this gap is, we want 1,000, which is how much we want in total, minus the amount we've already got, which is 400. 
So a thousand minus four hundred equals six hundred milliliters. Now, some of you might be saying, but surely this section at the bottom isn't the same as these ones because it's had a bit taken off in the corners. That's just the diagram. Don't let that confuse you. I can see how it, how it could, but each of these sections is the same. So don't worry about those little corners. Question 13. Talia has plant labels of different shapes. Which shape has sides that are all the same length? Right, well, some of these we can do just by looking at them. So that is clearly not the same length as that. So we can roll it out. Uh, that is not the same length as that. So roll it out. These two, well, they might be less obvious, but actually, if we look at these two parallel lines, I can see this one at the bottom is clearly longer than that one at the top. So it must be this one here. But if we want to make sure, we've got our ruler. So I can measure it. That's about 2.6 or 7 centimetres. Same as that one. And the same as that one. So this must be our equilateral triangle meaning all the sides are the same length. Question 14. Talia has points of different heights. The heights follow this pattern. 45 millimetres, 60 millimetres, 75 millimetres. Talia uses a pot the next height up from 75 millimetres. What height of pot does Talia use? Okay, so if it's following a pattern, basically what they're saying is it's increasing by the same amount each time. And if we want to know what it's increasing by, we take the bigger number, the 60, and subtract the smaller number. So this is going up by 15. So let's check what's happening with this one. We'll again take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. So that's going up by 15. So if we want to know the next one, well, we just need to add on 15 to the biggest number. 75 plus 15 is 90 millimetres. Question 15. Talia has a chart to show the heights of fruit trees. So we've got the height of fruit trees as our title. We've got the height going up the scale here, we've got types of tree, apple, pear, plum and cherry. How much taller is the apple tree than the plum tree? So we're only interested in apple and plum. Let's start with the apple tree. Let's go up to the top of here. So this is the height we want. Now again, we don't know what each of these is worth, so we can't just guess. But we've got one, two, three, four, five sections there. And we can see that it's increasing by 100. So if we do 100 divided by 5, it'll tell us what each of these gaps is worth. So 100 divided by 5, each one's worth 20. So that would be 520. Another 20, you can use your calculator to check this would be 540. So the next one must be 560. And that's going to be in centimetres. Now we're comparing that with the height of the plum tree, which is down here. Well, we can start from the 300 and count up, or we can say, well, if each of these is worth 20, let's start with the 400, which is up here, and just subtract 20. So this must be 380. So again, we can write that on here. 
So if we want to know how much taller it is, we need the height of the apple tree, which is 560, and we subtract the height of the plum tree, which is 380. 560 minus 380 gives us 180, sorry, 80, and that's still going to be in centimetres. Question 16. Talia looks for a new forklift for the company. This is a forklift truck. And we've got some information about different ones here. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, different types of forklifts. We're told what the power is, diesel, electric or gas. Uh, the maximum lift weight in tonnes and the maximum lift height in metres. Talia chooses an electric forklift. The lift weight needs to be 1.5 tonnes or more. The lift height needs to be more than four metres. Which forklift does Talia choose? So it's got to be electric, 1.5 tonnes or more, in terms of the maximum weight, and the lift height needs to be more than four metres. Well, if it's got to be electric, well, then it can't be A, because that's diesel, can't be D, because that's diesel as well. And it can't be E, because that one's gas. So we've got three left. The lift weight needs to be 1.5 tonnes or more. This is the lift weight. Well, 0.9 is less than 1.5, so it can't be that one. We've got two. Well, two tonnes is more than 1.5, so that's okay. 1.5, well that is, but it says 1.5 tonnes or more. So it's all right, it could be either of those. But the lift height needs to be more than four metres. This one's more than four metres, so this looks good. This one is four metres, so it's not more than four metres. So it can't be F, so it must be C. Question 17. Talia weighs tomatoes from different plants. Which plant has the greatest weight of tomatoes? Okay, let's get them all here. So we want, what, what's the biggest number, basically? And then we can work out which plant that is. 0.6 kilograms, 0.64 kilograms. Well, 0.64 is more than just 0.6, because you can think of that as 0.60, so... It's not A, because this one's more. Right, plant C. Well, 0.6459 is less than 64. So we're still sticking with this one. 0.4. Again, think of 0.4 as 0.40. So we've got two digits to compare. Well, 0.64 is more than 0.40. So it's not that one. 0.7. Well, think of that as 0.70. 0.70 or like 70 would be more than 64. So we've got a new leader. And finally 0.68 or well 70 is more than 68. So it must be plant E. And finally, question 18. Talia answers emails from customers about plants. She counts the subjects of emails. So some are about food, some are about watering, some are about soil, and so on. Complete the frequency table for the results. So we've already got these. We're saying that there's three emails about food, which is one, two, three. That's good. We're just going to fill in the last one. So how many emails about watering are there? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're done. So I hope you found the video useful.
please like it, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and uh, let me know if you've got any questions. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.